Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. So as I record this, I am past 500 subscribers. You know, if you asked me a few years ago if I'd be at this kind of level, I'd have said no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But it's where I am now, and I have all of you to thank. And it's through your support that I continue to do this, and I hope to keep getting better and better at it as time goes on. But I did state on Twitter and on the YouTube community tab that if I broke 500, I would start work on a Q&A. So what I did is I went onto my Discord, which you can find that in the description, and I asked, okay guys, you get, you've got an open platform to ask me any question. As soon as I break 25 questions, I'm going to wrap it all up and I'm going to put that in a video. Well, this is that video. Multiple people sent me more than one question, so I'm going to get to the people who asked only one question first, and then I'm going to go with the further stuff. Incidentally, that's also why this video is not edited. Because, one, I don't have the kind of fancy editing to do that kind of thing. Two, I don't feel like doing screen caps of every single person's question. And three, well, it's my usual style to be light on details anyways. So... With all that said, let's get started. So, Homer asks, will you be enticed to a Filipino-style banquet? As long as there's nothing sp extremely spicy and there's no chocolate involved, yeah. I've never, I've never been to a Filipino-style banquet. I've never even had Filipino-style cuisine ever in my life. So, it'd be a new experience, and I never turn that kind of thing down. Um, Herpicus McDurbington asks, Imperium or Chaos? Imperium, obviously. Do I re do you really think I want to have five tentacles and three eyes and all that? Plus, at least I can go with somebody who wins things, unlike fail but on. Diehard asked, what was the first tabletop you played? Um, now if you're talking about tabletop RPGs and not board games, which I'm assuming you are, that answer would be AD&D 2nd Edition. Specifically, the Black Book era. Which I know some people aren't exactly fond of, but that was where I got my start. And I still have some of those black books from back in the day. It is kind of funny that in those they put out a blurb saying, This is not a D&D 3rd edition. And then we'd get a D&D 3rd edition less than a decade later. Um, I can understand why some people don't like this particular era. Because this was way in the um, Lorraine Williams era. Which is a story in and of itself. But... For me, the for me, I liked my experience with AD and D, but something you have to keep in mind is I was a child of the '90s. I grew up on Power Rangers. I grew up on martial arts films. I grew up on Bruce Lee works. I grew up on samurai films and all that. I used to watch Gunsmoke weekly when I was growing up. So, the idea of doing just one note action the the way it's done with with uh, non magical characters in AD and D never sat with me, and it still doesn't. It takes me quite a bit to even ta even tackle old-school um, RPGs, like Retro Clones. There's a reason I've only covered three Retro Clones since I did this uh, channel. And, of course, after that, I ended up branching out into things that were great to branch out into, like Rifts, kind of, and things that were less good to branch out into, like Toon. Toon sucked. Now, well, Mr. Ninopoly is the first of our multiple question ones, so I will tackle these as best as I can. So he first asks, will there be a crossover stream with the Monastery and the Stream of Corruption? Well, Nurgle knows where I am, and I've been on hit, and I've been on his channel multiple times, so certainly a possibility. You'd just you'd you'd have to contact him, or, or I'd have to have a right angle to do it. But I'm not going to say no to it. Um, if you had the chance to interview Stan Lee when he was alive, what would you ask him and why? Um, if I were to ask him and if I were to ask Stan Lee anything, I would have. I probably would have asked him. I know you're running out of. I I know you're running out of origin ideas, but of all things, why mutants? When it came to the creation of the X Men, I know that seems like an odd question to ask, but that's the question that I would ask because I'm genuinely curious. Why you went? Why you ended up going with that? Now, I know DC eventually had the whole metahuman thing 
so they didn't run into this problem. But it's interesting. Will you do a face reveal? No. Technically, I already did since I had my webcam on when I was do when I was doing the Sekiro um stream. But there's no real point. And I've I've already shown my face. I showed my face plenty of times when I was doing the Twitter thing. I've show I've shown my face when I was do when I was cosplaying in that suit. So there's no real point to make a big face reveal video or anything like that. Do you believe in Bigfoot and Yeti? Yes. I do believe that there is a leg that there is a legitimate origin for Bigfoot and Yeti that has gotten embellished as time went on. I do think that there is some modicum of of truth rega regarding it, but as far as the Bigfoot and Yeti as we know as we know them, no. Are you on the list? Of course I'm on the list. What is your favorite XFL team? That's a tough call, but Right now, I'd right now I'd say the team that I the team that I end up rooting for the most is the is the uh, DC Defenders. Putting aside the fact that DC is probably really really glad to have a good football team, I just I lo I love their I love their uh, schemes. I love the stadium that they play in. That's a loud that's a loud loud crowd. I I love the uh, quarterback that they've got, and. I just like that team. I just like that team overall, and it doesn't help that they're that they're a um, really strong contender and are probably are probably going to end up winning out at the end of the season. How long until the XFL and NFL have an event where the winner of each championship play each other? I do not see that happening. The N because that is getting dangerously close to the original concept of the Super Bowl when you had the AFL and NFL. Uh, mer merged for that whole affair. Could it happen in maybe ten years if the if the league stays around that much? Maybe, but I don't see it happening now. And there wouldn't be a real point because you'd just be having a Super Bowl after the Super Bowl, or you'd be. Ha I guess maybe you could get away with it if you had it in as the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, the way the original Pro Bowl was before they, for whatever reason, moved it to Orlando, which. I have friends and family in Orlando. Orlando sucks. He then goes, what is worse than Detroit? Nothing is worse than Detroit. Ever. How good is your Scott Steiner math? Not as good as you might think because I did not come from a highly educated university. Next, Hairball asks um, several questions. First he goes, what was the point at which you decided to start the monastery? Um, that whole thing started right around the time um, I was on a bunch of streams with people who were involved in Gamergate. I was on Game Diviner's streams. I was on Flatmeister's streams. I was on Nur I was on Nurgle's streams, and I was and I was on um, I was on Louis B's ra um, um, radio show, and. Having that kind of experience, as well as my love for morning radio with the, with the likes of Tom Bernard, Itha, KQ, and Dar and Dark Starp, who used to who used to uh, live nearby me, um, it kind of put the idea in my head of maybe I should set up a podcast, and it's something that I've wanted to do for the longest time. I just never got the courage to do it, and. There was also the fact that I was terrified of the fact that I'd be talking to myself for <laughs> several hours at the very least. So, I ended up doing it, and the rest is history. He goes, as an addition to the above question, how did you cross paths with Aaron and Doku? Now, Aaron, I, I first found out about him when he was starting the, when, um, he was starting the early stuff with um with Ronan. In fact, you in fact there's a really old video where I inter where I interviewed him and we both had we both had our face cams up because we were using uh Google Hangouts. This was shortly after he interviewed Mercedes, who I uh, who I keep praying for that she that she manages to get through the whole prison thing as soon as soon as possible. Um and when it as far as Doku I met him through my time with the Stream of Corruption, and 
And I always hit it off fine with him, even if he got a bit wordy and it got got a bit repetitive anytime Star Citizen would get brought up. But I decided I'd bring him I decided I'd bring him in because I think he and he and I are of uh, of similar mindsets. Plus the fact we're both filthy fucking weebs without being filthy fucking weebs. Um what made you decide to in- incorporate the tank bull and who came up with the names for the quartet? Now, the tank bull thing, that was just a gag because I'm a fan of urinating trees work. And when I saw when I saw how there were certain stories that were thematically similar back to back, that's when that's when I decided to do it. Um the rules of tank bull of course are are a bit loose, but it's just that it's a case of two men enter, we all lose. Um as far as the names for the quartet, it started right around the time that Fallout 76 was become was becoming the big meme in in um, gaming. And I had offhand it was like every single week there was some new fuck up that happened with the game and I offhandedly suggested that maybe we should give it its own theme song. And then <laughs> Aaron decides to add the bold and the beautiful theme Opening theme to the to to the soundboard, and then we got the bold and the Bethesda, which then became the bold and the bitch Thesda. Um, the but that's how that's how it that's how the um, unholy trinity kind of kind of got started because there were all you had these phases where first it was Fallout seventy six, then it was Anthem, then then it was the the uh, non-traversies that were going on with Modern Warfare and and with Blizzard, and it just it just kept happening for several weeks. Then one would switch out, and that's how we that's how we ended up getting the Bold and the Bitch Thesda, the EA egregious assholes, the asshats of Activision, and finally One Life Two K, which I was fighting for the longest time not to include. 2K as part of the Trinity because I wanted it to be a holy unholy Trinity, not an unholy quartet. But then enough times happened where I where I said, you know what, let's do it. Um. Yes, could WantC ever redeem itself in your eyes? Yes. I do not ascribe to the notion that once you screw up, you are completely irredeemable. That's cancel culture shit, and I don't do that. What I would say that they would have to do in order to in order to redeem themselves is is actually start listening to their to their own fan to their own fan base and stop trying to chase the trend of people who aren't going to be here when Critical Role eventually goes belly up. Um. Yes. Two thousand one WCW or current day WWE. You know, as bad as Raw and SmackDown are. And as much as I have refused to watch them, I would still take that over 2001 WCW simply because of the fact that I can at least watch a match without getting pissed off most nights. There's exceptions, obviously, and there's also the fact that there's a much better talent roster than there was in 2001 WCW. Um, and last, the last question that Hairball asked is, Nick Folk or Cody Doink the Clown Parky? As much as I hate to say it, I'm going with I'm going with um, Nick Folk, because at least he still has a job. I think. I don't know if he got fired from the Patriots, although I'm not entirely sure if going with the Patriots is an upgrade right now, given that they're probably going to be on the downturn for the next five years. Um, the last batch of questions is coming from Cure Crystal. Um, the first one is, who introduced you to TRPG in the first place? That would be my mentor, and it mostly was due. To, it was mostly due to the fact that I spent more time hanging out with him than I did in my own house for very, very specific reasons that I don't want to go into here. But part of it had to do with the fact that I loved board games, and I loved the more complicated board games. Like I, w- I would play Clue to death. I would play chess every chance I got. I would pl- I would play Strategio and Battleship any chance I got at th- at the YMC at the YMCA near my house at the time. So I always liked um board games. And I was always come up with coming up with my own tweaks to it. 
And he suggested D&D to me. I was like, what's D&D? And then he showed me the box set and I, and I started having fun with it. Um, next question is, how did I meet Shades? Even though he, even though he's decided to declare himself persona non grata, if I have anybody to thank for that encounter, as far as personally, I would, I would give it to, um, Biohybrid. Now, I will admit that I did submit a bunch of my stuff under the old Reviewtopia days, as well as other places like Rise of the Critics when, as a simple user, and I was on the forums from time to time. Even even jumped on a cup a few streams that started up the meme of don't print don't mention K O N around me otherwise I get really really pissed off. It was it was a long time ago and I was younger and dumber. Um, but Biohybrid approached me on Skype one day and he brought up the whole the whole idea of doing of doing this um of doing a Tokusatsu campaign because apparently. Shades have wanted to do that for the longest time, but for one reason or another, it just never worked out. So, he gave me a couple links, one to a Super Sentai-themed class for D&D 3rd Edition, and one for a homebrew game called Rider the Transformation. I ended up opting with the latter. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. I should, I should, have, gone, I should have gone with my own instincts and, and gone with a third option, but... Hindsight is twenty twenty. Because if you were to do to be on the dumpster fire stream as a guest, what would you guys talk about? Um, I'd prob I probably talk I probably I probably talk mostly about um mostly about ho- mostly about hockey. I might talk about the XFL nowadays, but the thing is, I don't I haven't presented my identity as a sport as a sports um streamer. Like I'll do the men who share at sports ball, but that's that that's always been designed to be a side project compared to the more general streams with Monastery Live. So, the ad, the possibility of me going on the dumpster fire is nil. It's not. It is not happening. Um, was there any game you tried once and never tried again? Uh, yeah. I'd in terms of in terms of tabletop games. I'd say, I'd say Mystic Imperium was one of them, and I think I I think I was fooled by the by the fact that they had Greg Horn doing the um cup doing the cover art, but that is the classic example of what I'd call a fantasy heartbreaker because it was clearly trying to do a more realistic take. The problem is it got so bogged down in its own, in its own sense of realism that it forgot to be an actual game, and apparently I'm not the only one because that game was not exactly well liked. Um, he asked, what is my favorite and least favorite tabletop game? Now, this is a tricky question because I segment my favorites and least favorites by different genres because of the whole Taylor attitude that I have when it comes to it. Since not all games are created equal and I prefer sen- I prefer re- recommending to someone the right game for what specifically they're looking to play. Taking that into account, though, if you were to pin me down on the matter, I would say my favorite is th- is um for- is fourth edition, Legend of the Five Rings. Um, it's a tie between third and fourth edition, and Exalted. Consider it a three-way tie between those three because those were the ones that really s- that really set me forward when it comes to my approaches. Um, as far as least favorite. One might think that it's D&D 5th edition because of how I bashed what um, happened during the beta. But that's not the case, actually. My least favorite TRPG is Phoenix Command. Which ended up being used for the first attempt at an Aliens RPG, and it sucks. Not because of the fact that people people wanted more detail back in the day, no. I've played more detailed games from that era. Phoenix Command sucks. It is it always sucked and it will continue to suck until someone ties me down and forces me to stop. Um was there any show I liked growing up? You know, 
being where being where I come being where I came from, of course I cut my teeth on MST three K. In fact I used to I used to live near I used to live nearby the old Paragon station. Um But be, beyond that there's a bunch of different shows that I could mention. I could mention how I grew up a Power Rangers kid like everybody else in the nineties. I could mention Batman. But I'd I wanna go some for some of the more obscure things that I remember that I remember enjoying. Um I re- I really really liked um Mighty Max. I don't know why I did. Um and Bru- and Bruno the Kid, probably because of the fact that its opening theme was the biggest earworm of my childhood. But a thing the a thing to understand when it comes to my approach with nostalgia is I unlike some of my um colleagues, I do not live and die on Disney. In fact, Disney had far less of an influence on the stuff that I liked than people would think. Especially, especially, especially since, for me, Disney was just that thing that that thing that other parents put on while I was while I was visiting. Like it was, it was never something that I would outright go into. And as a kid, hearing "It's a Small World" always pissed me off, and I don't know why. Um. Yes, are there any inspirational quotes that you can look back on? Um I don't really look at particular quotes in that way. I you're not going to see me have some quote as a demotivational or or something like that. What I look back on is multiple things that some multiple things that someone said or a, or acted upon or or the like. I'm kind of a holist like that. It's never one thing it's a combination of things. So that's not really a question I can answer. I realize that sounds like a bit of a cop out, but it is what it is. It goes, have have there ever been a time where you thought, why did I think this was a good idea? Uh yes. I would say I would say the one case that I that it that I had that attitude of why did I think this was a good idea was my att- was my attempt to cr- to create a, a card game that I called Legend Wars. This was way back when I was in high school, and I still have the manuscript of the rules, but I am not sharing that on this channel. In part because what I wrote stunk, and also there's the fact that the that I was way too full up of myself. I thought that I had created some revolutionary thing. And then I looked at the wider margin of what's available, and I realized I didn't. But that's all the questions. Um, thank you very much for watching, or listening. And I hope to do this again if I hit 1,000. Well, maybe not that high, but maybe something a little lower. But if I do this again, as always, there's going to be a particular part of the Discord solely for that. If you want to join in on that, well, the Discord, like I said, the Discord's down in the description. Thank you for putting up with my stumbliness, and stay frosty, folks.